We expect the Mueller effect to impact the 2020 presidential race. Our power panel is here to debate. Former Obama campaign policy advisor, Laurie Watkins. The Daily Caller editorial director, Vince Colonnese. And constitutional law attorney, Jenna Ellis. Welcome to all of you. Thank you. Thank Thanks, you. Shannon. Okay, so the day after the Mueller report, lightly redacted as the DOJ uh, described it, there has a, been a subpoena now to go out from the uh, Judiciary Committee. The chair, Jerry Nadler, has talked often about the issue of impeachment. He says, we got to see what's in there so we can decide if that's where we're going. Now, DOJ says this about the subpoena today. The Department of Justice has made arrangements for Chairman Nadler and other congressional leaders to review the report with even fewer redactions. In light of this, Congressman Nadler's subpoena is premature and unnecessary. Ari. Yes, so a few select members of Congress will be able to view the less redacted version of this report next week. And Congressman Jerry Nadler was correct in, in ordering a subpoena for a fully reda um, unredacted report and version of that. But leaders in Congress need to continue to push for special counsel Mueller to come and testify before Congress, as well as an ongoing investigation that needs to remain unimpeded um, with President Trump and his inner circle. It was very clear in the special counsel's report that Congress can um, open up the question of obstruction and it's up to Congress for further review and debate. Okay, so Vince, a lot of these folks who are on these letters demanding answers in the unredacted uh, report for them to see in full are attorneys. They know that the grand jury stuff is not stuff that they're going to be allowed to see without a court order. Um, but this is what the Democrats, uh, several of them in their letter to the DOJ said today, your proposed accommodation, which among other things would prohibit discussion of the full report, even with other committee members, is not acceptable. So Vince, they're saying... Thanks, but no thanks on a look at a lesser redacted, redacted report. Right. Well, I mean, you know, the Department of Justice would be right to be skeptical of Democrats if that's, was, if that's what the feeling was here, because we've seen plenty of leaks come out of Congress when the materials are actually sent over to Congress. We know that Attorney General, General Bill Barr has meticulously been as forthcoming as he possibly can be with both, con with both Congress and the American public. And we should be realistic about what the Democratic intent here is. This is an effort to keep a scandal alive that was, that was pushed on the American public for two years. There's some dramatic goalpost shifting going on. The original allegation was and continued to be that collusion took place. That well has completely dried up. And as a result of it, now you have desperate Democratic members of Congress looking for another partisan out to make this harmful for the president. All right, Jenna, I want to give you a quick final word on this because I want to make sure we get to our second topic. Yeah, and so I mean, Democrats are looking for impeachment. It's nothing more than a political move here, and it's not going to help them in 2020. Uh, the Democrats are the party of feelings-based truth rather than objective truth that's grounded in fact and reality. The fact and reality is that the legal questions are closed, and they just want to uh, have President Trump be guilty because they feel like it. Remember, the progressive left is the party that feelings-based, um, you know, you can wake up and be a different gender based on what you feel. They ignore the fact and reality that a human being in the womb is made in the image of God. They ignore the fact that pre-political rights come from God, our creator. And so as they continue to ignore fact and reality, this is not going to go well for them in 2020 because they're ignoring the rule of law. They're ignoring all of the facts of the situation based simply on their hatred for Donald Trump. Well, and somebody who wants to come out on top on in 2020, we understand that the former vice president, by a number of sources, says that he's going to announce he's in the race next week. Um, but something we can't confirm is that he may potentially make his announcement in Charlottesville, which obviously um, was a tragic place where, you know, race relations flared. There were massive problems. A woman lost her life there. Um, it's a very controversial spot. But th tonight there are a number of people asking questions about Biden's record on race. And this may be why he, if he goes there, is going there. Um, in a piece in the New York Times, The Trouble with Biden, the author says this, um, that Biden has given a, um, liberal cover to whites and white backlash in the past. He says, he wasn't an accidental opponent of busing. He was a leader who helped derail integration. He didn't just vote for punitive legislation on crime and drugs. He wrote it. Um, I want to have you all weigh in quickly on that, Laurie. We'll start with you. I mean, also comments he's made about reparations uh, that really do not seem to fit with where the party is in 2019. Look, I understand this issue is brought up uh, every time that uh, Vice President Biden has decided to run for either re-election or for president. It is an issue that is important. I'm not going to discredit that, but it's also an issue that has been brought up every time and it's over 40 years old. Senator, uh, Vice President Biden, excuse me, um, hoped that 
busing would bring equal opportunity, but it didn't. And that wasn't so, and that's not what happened. I think uh, Vice President Biden has overwhelming support from the civil rights activists and community within America, and he has proven himself okay. time and time again. Um, Vince, he called the idea of busing asinine. He had yeah. his objections to it. Um, but again, the crime bill seems to be the one that really um, gets him the most uh, backlash from the left. I'll have you quickly comment and then Jenna. Yeah, each of these, each of his campaigns, this has been brought up, but you know what? The Democratic Party has never had less tolerance for explanations about this than they do right now. They will use this against him. This will be a bloody primary, and this, these topics will come up. Busing, being opposed to that, that's coming up. His support for the crime bill, that's coming up. His treatment of Anita Hill during the 90s, that's all going to come up, and it will be used as a cudgel against him. This is a party he helped build, but it's one that he doesn't recognize, and identity politics is going to hurt Joe Biden in a way that he's not expecting. Jenna? Yeah, and I would agree with Vince that uh, basically Joe Biden's campaign is going to be an apology tour for identity politics. He's basically disclaiming um, himself as in the old white male, and he's saying that he is ageist, racist, and sexist, and we can see that throughout uh, the course of his political history. And so he's just continuing to apologize, and I think that with the, uh, the 2019 and going into 2020, the Democrats aren't going to embrace him, and I think that um, he's not going to be a candidate that will stand up well against Donald Trump, certainly, because we can see that Donald Trump has really brought policy as the forefront of the issue, not identity politics. Well, it's the most diverse field in Democratic primary history, so we will see as uh, the top uh, folks polling at the top, Bernie, Biden, and Beto, and now Buttigieg. It's all the beast. All right, thank you all for being with us on our Power Panel. Thank Great you, to Shannon. have you. Thank you, Shannon. Thanks.